How's it going everyone? Mountain Spider here, bringing you another video in the Battlefield Gothic Armada Favor series. So, this video is going to be looking at the Eldar Corsairs. Now, Eldar Corsairs, in my opinion, is by far the most difficult race to play, as their ships are incredibly, incredibly fragile, and you don't have shields on top of that. So, their fav what favor you pick really does influence how your fleet will perform, and it is important picking a, f a favor that will then suit your playstyle. So, starting uh, with Alotic. Your passive is Community Line Alloy, so as long as the ship isn't moving, it is considered hidden, not even appearing as a blimp. Enemy detection range can still detect the ship, however. Um, so th that's nice, like as you start the game, you keep your ships immobile and then they won't appear on the enemy's screen whatsoever. One downside of this is that unfortunately if you're using fighters, the fighters still do appear on the enemy's screen, so it's, yeah, it's, it has its pros and cons. They really should be make it that the fighters and see this as well, but anyway. So then your active is Pathfinder Assault. Now this is a really uh, powerful passive. It has unlimited range, and the ship sends a range to strike team, causing critical damage automatically. The uh, you can target a ship with its shields active. The critical damage is, however, temporary. Um, it starts on cooldown at the start of the battle and has a 240 second cooldown. But this is great because it has unlimited range, and you're getting a guaranteed lightning strike off that does critical damage and it goes to three shields. Um, so the second one then is Biotan. Biotan passive is Aspect Warrior, so the troop value of the ship is increased by 10. This is incredibly valuable as you're very susceptible to lightning strikes. And getting that troop value up just helps that a little bit. And then your active ability is the Avatar of Kane. So the Avatar of Kane replaces the basic lightning strike skill. Uh, this action cannot be performed on a ship that still has its shields up. The Avatar of Kane can deal permanent critical damage. And the Avatar of Kane's chances of dealing critical damage to the target ship are based on its troop value. So it's pretty much an upgraded version of the Lightning Strike and it deals permanent damage which is fantastic. Then moving on to Saim Han. Their passive is the Ambusher skill. So as long as the ship is hidden, it attacks and inflicts 25% additional damage. This only applies to Star Cannons and Pulse Arms, so you're not going to get bonus damage or point your bubble skill. But then your active ability synergizes with this quality called Phantom Disruption. The distant enemy ship scanners within the target area of 3000 units are crippled and have their detection range reduced to 1000 for 20 seconds. So now this ability has a range of 10,000 and the radius of the ability is uh, 3000 units. So as you are about to engage upon your uh, opponents, you can then use Phantom Disruption to shut down their scanners for 20 seconds, which allows you to get a 25% damage bonus off. Um, nice thing with this is it, it does stack with the auger disruption. So as your 20 seconds are about to come to an end, you then hit the auger disruption to keep the sensors even lower. So as long as you can kite your enemies, you can get a huge damage, damage buff off with um, Simon. And then last way, last we, no, no, lastly, sorry, we get Ulthwe. So their passive is the Saki Blockade. The, it disturbs enemy teleportation. The ship's troop value is increased by 15 against lightning strikes. Now, this is a great passive, especially considering the fact that you're susceptible to lightning strikes because you don't have shields. So this really, really does make up for the fact that you don't have shields in terms of being hit by lightning strikes. And then you get a really great passive, uh, sorry, active, called Maelstrom. So the ship invokes a storm of raw psychic energy within 10,000 units. The Maelstrom inflicts 10 damage per second to shieldless ships in it. The damage dealt by Maelstrom ignores the target's armor. Different instances of Maelstrom don't stack. Uh, one warning though is that Maelstrom can hit your own ships. Now this ability, uh, as far as I remember, it doesn't start on cooldown, on cooldown, so you can use it at the beginning of the battle. Now Maelstrom deals a lot of damage to enemy ships within its radius. And the great thing with this is, if you get your enemies caught in the slow time bubble, I can't think it's right now. I think it's here, but I know it's not here. If you get them stuck in that. Um, and then you hit a Maelstrom on top of them, they're pretty much stuck. Um, what's it called? A stasis bomb, that's it, sorry. So if you get your enemy stuck in the stasis bomb and then cast Maelstrom on top of them, they will be taking a hell of a lot of damage. So you get that combo off uh, right, it is brilliant for you. So the four aspects of the Eldar Corsairs really do suit them quite nicely as the different craft worlds. Um, so other attack is nice if you like the, your sneaky like bomber runs. Um, Build Town is a lot of fun in the sense that it's your good like medium range and has that good defense against either boarding actions or lightning strikes and the avatar of Kane is great for taking down opponent ships. 
If you're a stealthy player, Siam Han is amazing. Uh, it does require a lot of kiting, unfortunately. But you get it right, the damage you're dealing is going to be fantastic. And then the last and last, definitely least, is Ulfur. Their passive really does make up for the disadvantage of not having shields. And your active deals awesome amounts of damage that cut straight through shield and ignore armor. So with a bit of control, Ulfur can be very, very powerful and a very, very balanced uh, favor to use. So I hope this video helped you if you're trying to decide what favors to take with your uh, Elder Corsairs, or if you're just looking into getting the game and should see what favors you can play, or what favors you can use to influence your feet. Um, yeah, I do hope this helped and just gave a bit more information to everyone. And yeah, please hit the like button below and subscribe for more content. And cheers everyone, enjoy!